Okay, hi, welcome back. This is day number three, and we're still pressing on. Uh, we're going through the Purpose Driven Life book. So yesterday we wrapped up day two, and I just want to quickly go through um, the questions to consider. We talked about um, I'm not an accident, and just reminding ourselves that we're not an accident. God created us, and um, he chose us for a specific reason and a purpose. And then the verse to remember we had was, I am... I am your creator. You were in my care even before you were born. Isaiah 44, 2. I just want to say with these verses, in this book, Rick Warren, he takes a lot of different um, Bible translations. And he did that on purpose because he wanted to try to give us a different perspective of the verses that maybe we've heard over and over again. So take it with a pure heart and um, really try to allow the uh, message in the different translations not to shock you like, what? My Bible doesn't read like that. But take it with a pure heart and um, open mind and uh, just try to look at it and see, hey, do I really see the translation that way? But look at the bottom line message, okay? So that's all I have to say about that one, what I think. <laughs> okay, so the question to consider we had for yesterday was, I know that God uniquely created me. What areas of my personality background and physical appearance physical appearance am I struggling to accept some people may be struggling to accept the fact that they have a temper some may be struggling to accept the fact that they just can't control um, their frustration and anger I don't know for personality wise or they're very sensitive um, some might be you know their background they may have I, don't, I mean it varies we are all so different that's what makes us all so beautiful or it could be just physical appearance. And I know with the physical appearance, um, I can relate to this one more. The other ones, I didn't quite relate to that one too much. But physical appearance, I struggled for a long time with just my weight, my body weight. And I believed and I knew that God created me to do great works and do great things. But I didn't have the confidence to walk in that image that I felt God created me because I felt I had so much baggage and I wasn't um, feeling good at taking care of myself. So I spent some time in prayer and just, you know, prayed my prayer, Lord, just help me get rid of this weight. Um, help me to get rid of the weight. I can help other people get rid of it. That was my promise. And, you know, it wasn't overnight. This was something that happened over a period of time and continue to, you know, fine tune it. It's been about four years now since I've actually stuck with it. You know, there's been many times where I start this plan and try to get healthy and try to get better. Um, and then I would stop, um, either get pregnant or, you know, just life events that happen. But um, I'm very grateful for where I am now. And I must say that having um, a better body image definitely helps me to want to walk more confidently in the purpose that I feel God has um, provided for me or shown me or led me to. And it also gives me more energy to want to pursue that purpose even more. So everyone knows, you know, that um, people want to lose weight for vanity reasons, one. But I would say take off that vanity purpose, but just to think of, you know, getting yourself in shape to be that person that God has called you to be and to have the boldness and confidence in your skill sets and your abilities to be able to do that. So that's what I just shared with you um, as far as like the struggle that I had um, in terms of you know what I'm willing to accept. Now that I've lost quite a bit of weight in the process, I've begun to get some muscle definition hey, you know, in different parts. But then one area or a couple areas that just don't want to seem to really change has been in the stomach and the thigh area. I'm like, what is going on here? We got to get this fixed. But, you know, I know that God doesn't make any mistakes and things will happen in this time. So I'm not going to get frustrated or annoyed with it as long as every day I'm making greater efforts to move to a greater health and wellness and I'm walking in the purpose that I feel that God is leading me to, I feel that things will happen. So um, today we're going to go through what drives your life. And in this one, I started reading it this morning just before I went to class. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is actually really, really kind of <sighs> scary because I have an exercise that I'm going to do today, a stretching one to a particular song that I thought really tied into this. I'm like, whoa, this is 
interesting. Okay. So what drives your life? And I thought this was really, really um, interesting. I won't go through all of it in detail. I'll just try to pick some highlights. I encourage you to get the book, maybe online or somewhere you can get it. Uh, many people are driven by guilt. Uh, we are products of the past, uh, but we don't have to be prisoners of it. Sometimes people hold on to so much anger and so much guilt and frustration from their past, and it holds them back from being the person that God wants them to be. God specializes in giving people a fresh start. So just knowing that you know God is going to be with you and give you that fresh start can help. Another one, people are driven by resentment and anger. They either take that and um, they hold on to the hurts and never let go of them. Instead of releasing their pain through forgiveness, they rehearse it over and over and over in their head. Joyce Meyer has a book I know as Battlefield of the Mind. I haven't read it, but I heard about it. I've seen a lot of her um, TV ministries where she talks a lot about the battlefield of the mind and how there's a battle that goes on in the mind that causes you. And I thought this kind of tied into what she was also saying uh, from that TV ministry that I saw. But um, here he's saying that some resentment, some resentment driven people clam up and internalize their anger while others blow up and explode it into others. Both responses are unhealthy and unhelpful. So um, your past, so he's basically your past is your past. Nothing can change it. You are only hurting yourself with bitterness for your own sake. Learn from it and let it go. Is is free? Um yeah, just try to let it go. Okay, um, that's what I said. This I did a, a exercise program for today. Uh, I was planning to release it today, and when I saw that, just let it go. I'm like, wow, I'm doing it to the song. Let it go. So if any of you have kids who like the movie Frozen, that song will be done in our exercise um, session for today. So try to let go of that anger, that resentment that you have. And remember, we can't um, undo the past. And um, there's greatness that we can do going forward, okay? Uh, many people are driven by fear. Some people are just afraid to take a move, so they'll just stay in the same place and they won't grow. Uh, many are driven by materialism. So here, he's saying your value is not determined by your valuables. And God says the most valuable thing uh, in life are not things. So... That's another driver. Um, this one is many people are driven by need for approval. Again, I'm a fan of Joyce Meyer, too. Um, she has a book about approval addiction, and some people are so addicted to approval from other people, what other people got to say. And if I don't go here, what are they going to say about me? If I don't dress this way, what are they going to say? Yes, image is important. Yes, you need to do certain events. But you can't satisfy everybody, and you can't you know, live for everybody. What matters is who you're living for up above, okay? All right. All right. So then um, here, t -t 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 the benefits of living a purpose-driven life. Rick, in this section, day three, he goes on to talk about knowing your purpose gives meaning to life. And without God, life has no purpose. I thought this was really good. Without God, life has no purpose. And without purpose, life has no meaning. Without meaning, life has no significance or hope. So the greatest, tragedy, <laughs> the greatest tragedy is not death, but life without purpose. You need to, you need hope to cope. I like that. You need hope to cope. I think that's so true because when you get that hope, it, you get in, it, uh, inspired, you get motivated to want to just keep pressing up. You wake up in the morning, oh, okay, what I got to do? I'm on a mission. I got to get these things done, okay? Um, knowing your purpose simplifies your life. Okay, I did a lot of underlining here, so I got to read this part. Okay, it defines what you do and what you don't do. Your purpose becomes the standard as you use it to evaluate which activities are essential and which aren't. Simply ask yourself, does this activity help me fulfill one of God's purposes for my life? With a clear purpose, you have no foundation on which basis, on, on which to base your decisions, allocate your time, and use your resources. People who don't know their purpose try to do too much. And that causes stress, fatigue, and conflict. Whoa, that one spoke to me big time. Because I'm like, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And like, whoa, what are you doing, scatterbrain? You're doing everything. You got to, you know, focus, focus, focus. So I'm learning, you know, um, basically staying on target with the, the purpose and making sure that um, we're simplifying things. And then here, um, knowing your purpose focuses your life. You become effective by being selective. 
Without a clear purpose, you will keep changing directions, jobs, relationships, churches, or other externals, hoping each change will settle confusion or feel emptiness in your heart. So he gives an example on Paul um, saying that I'm focusing all my energies on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. If you want your life to have impact, focus it. Stop dabbling. Stop trying to do it all. Do less. Prune away even good activities and do only those which matter most. I like that one. That was another one that was good. And then knowing your purpose motivates your life. Um, purpose always produces passion. Nothing energizes like a clear purpose. On the other hand, passion dissipates when you lack a purpose. Just getting out of bed becomes a major chore. It's usually meaningless work, not overwork, that wears us down, saps our energy, and robs our joy. So that purpose is important, isn't it? Yeah, motivating us, getting us out of bed, helping us to uh, wake up with that excitement and everything. And then this last one is knowing your purpose prepares you for eternity. Now, I said I had this book for a couple years, and then I pulled it out recently because there's someone that I love, and I can't be with this person right now, and I'm like, what can we do to work together? And I didn't want to do just exercise alone. I want to add in the whole the spiritual side because it's everything that, that drives you know, the changes that we want to see in our lives. But then I looked at this last one. I have these other four points highlighted previously from um, the last time I cherry-picked through the book. And then this last one is not highlighted. And I said, whoa, maybe that one I didn't highlight it because I really didn't want to think about it. And this is knowing your purpose prepares you for eternity. And I think maybe it's because I'm getting older and I'm seeing more people that are passing away. And um, living in Ghana, one of the cultural things that I notice here is when someone passed, the family members and friends, they take the obituary and paste it on the gates so people in the community can know that, that this person passed and they're mourning. Um, they have the highlights of the funeral information that's on their gate. And for me, I'm like, oh, wow, I don't want to see this. This is it. But it's part of life. It's part of life. And, you know, one day... It will happen, but while I'm here, I got a lot of living to do and things that I want to do. I want to have those memories with my kids. So then I thought about, okay, I'll take it. This is it, and it's part of it. So let's make the most of the time that I have now, and let's create those magical memories, those fun memories for our children, for our family members, for our friends, for ourselves, you know, and just live the life when you're done. Like, that chick lived her life, and that is no joke, you know, or that man lived his life. So just take it by force. It is what it is. We were all born. We're all going to go, but let's just live the life that we have. And some people wish that they can have the opportunities that we have, but we got it, and we don't use it all the time. So stir up your gifts and start using them. And uh, here he's saying that, uh, you know, there'll be a two, two main questions. The first is, what did you do with my son, Jesus Christ? Did you ask him to come into your heart, to change your heart? And then two, what did you do with what I gave you, the gifts and the talents that I gave you? Did you do anything with those? So think about what um, drives your life. Um, I've been thinking about it all day. I'll do my uh, writing this evening to get it down. So far, what I thought about that drives me is just, again, like I was saying earlier, having those memories. Um, it doesn't have to be memories to Disneyland, just simple memories of reading a book together with someone or going shopping to the grocery store every Tuesday with a certain person or every summer you're doing those things or scrapbooking or taking a picture with someone or gardening with a person. It doesn't always have to cost money, you know. Um, exercising all the time with a friend every Saturday morning. You know this is your routine that y'all go you go exercise together. Afterwards, you might grab something to eat. But it's creating those memories that last a lifetime. We're not going to remember the exact date, but we're going to have those memories in our hearts and in our minds forever, okay? And I think just creating those memories is something that motivates me. I like to think about, okay, how would this end? And then, you know, just trying to see transformations in other people, knowing that I've gone through many transformations myself, and it's really exciting to me. I'm like, oh, y'all got to see this. You got to do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And I think that right there, like, gets me going. Like, what is going on? But, you know, I think that's something that... And, um, that uh, 
uh, drives me to just keep pushing, especially with the classes and all, even doing this video. And like, come on, you can do this. You can do it. Come on, girl. Get up. Get up. Get up. We got a lot of work to do. We got living to do. We got to reach out. We got to move beyond our challenges. We got to go forward. So anyway, I got to wrap it up. I'm running out of time. I'm talking way too much. Sorry. And I hope you were able to follow through. Uh, day three, point to ponder. Living on purpose is the path to peace. Um, verse to remember, you, Lord, gave perfect peace to those who kept their purpose firm in their, uh, and put their trust in you, Isaiah 26, 3. And a question to consider, what would my family and friends say is the driving force in my life? What do I want it to be? Hmm, that's interesting. I knew they were going to have a question in there, but I didn't know it was going to come out like that. So I'm going to ask some people, what do they think? Um, it's the driving force of my life. And then I want to see, is it in alignment with what I think it is? Just a little exercise. So I challenge you to try the same thing. Okay, so today exercise, you're going to do um, some stretching. It's good for helping you to um, excel, um, get some energy flowing through your body, and improving your flexibility, and also helping to tone your body, getting those muscles moving. So, and I'm doing it to the song, Let It Go. So if you have anything you need to let go, you can play this song uh, from the movie Frozen, Let It Go, and let it inspire your heart and just push you forward to let it go. All right, muchas, love you. So day four coming next day, and we'll see what we have in store for that one. I won't look at it yet. All right, till next time, holla. Love you, God bless you.